So I hear you're looking to buy a new ship. Oh, you're on a budget. No problem, we've got just the thing for you. This puppy's the cheapest thing we've got on the lot right now. Now granted, it doesn't come with a hyperdrive. Or shields. Or a life support system, come to think of it. Actually, why would anyone buy these? But hey, it's eco-friendly. And there goes another customer. Great. Greetings fellow science fiction fans, my name is Justin and you're watching all things sci-fi and in this video we're going to be covering the twin ion engine space superiority fighter or as most of you will know it, the TIE fighter. Following the Galactic Republic's transformation into the Galactic Empire, Republic era weaponry and equipment would initially continue to be used within the new imperial regime. However, as time progressed the Republic's ARC-170 starfighters and Actus class light interceptors would slowly be phased out over the course of the Empire's first five years. To replace them, the governor of the Outer Rim, Grand Moff Tarkin, commissioned Sinar Fleet Systems to create a new starfighter, one that would be extremely fast and maneuverable, yet energy efficient and inexpensive to manufacture. Sinar had been responsible for many ships during and even before the Clone Wars, including the Star Courier, Alpha 3 Nimbus class V-Wing starfighter, an Eda II Actis class light interceptor, of which Sinar took inspiration from when creating the TIE Fighter. The solar panel system found on the Star Courier, the ion engines from the V-Wing, and the cockpit design from the Eda II. The result was a central spherical pod positioned between two hexagonal solar energy collecting wings. However, to minimize power drain and maximize maneuverability, Sinar opted to not include many standard systems, such as a deflector shield, or a hyperdrive. The TIE Fighter could seat one pilot and came in at a height of 7.24 meters or roughly one and a half double-decker buses. It had a max acceleration of 4,100 g's and could reach atmospheric speeds of 1,200 kilometers per hour thanks to its twin SFS ion engines. You may think that's fast but compared to real-life aircraft it pales in comparison with the fastest aircraft in the world, the North American X-15 coming in at speeds of a whopping 7,200 km per hour. Sorry TIE Fighter, you still have a bit to go before being the fastest at the school sports day. As previously stated, the TIE Fighter possessed no hyperdrive or shielding to maintain its economic and maneuverability advantages. The TIE Fighter also did not feature extensive life support systems with only a pressurized atmospheric seal and minimal oxygen scrubbers present on board which necessitated that TIE pilots had their life support systems built into their uniforms. The cockpit of a TIE fighter was cramped and contained full flight controls and a TS-8 targeting computer as well as enough rations to survive for two days. Each individual TIE fighter would cost 60,000 credits to manufacture and could be picked up used for around 25,000. This is insanely cheap compared to the price of something like an ARC-170 which cost 155,000 credits to manufacture, or the Eda II at a pricey 290,000 credits. This is where the TIE Fighters shined as they could be deployed in swarms as their low cost meant they were far more expendable than previous Starfighter designs. The hull of the ship was made of titanium and the wings were made up of 14 quadanium steel solar panels. The pilots possessed a large view window which was not made from glass but rather a metal called transparis steel which was as strong as steel, yet transparent. The Empire kept with their idea that TIE Fighters were an expendable force, even in regard to how TIE Pilots were trained. Pilots were instructed to ignore their own well-being in order to achieve their objectives. TIE Pilots fighters were also regularly rotated to prevent pilots from forming bonds with their ships and to instead focus on serving the Empire and completing their respective missions. Pilots were fanatics of the Empire willing to die in battle, which was good as the TIE Fighter mortality rate was one of the highest in the Imperial Navy. In a combat scenario, a TIE Pilot could use the inbuilt ejector seat should their fighter become correctly damaged. However, due to the lack of Imperial support, pilots that ejected would quite often be left to die in the cold depths of space. This allowed the Empire to show their pilots that they shouldn't die in battle for the Empire if necessary. The TIE Fighter had a wide array of variations put into use by the Empire for a lot of different roles from interceptors to bombers. The fighter also saw use by the New Republic after the fall of the Empire, 
but they were not used on worlds where there was a strong imperial presence during the war, as it was thought that a ship that was used to terrorize and destroy would not be a strong image for the New Republic. The legacy that the TIE fighter had left on the galaxy was not forgotten, as it is estimated that a minimum of approximately 4.6 million TIE fighters were produced for the Empire, and with the rise of the First Order, Sinar Fleet System's successor, Sinar Jameis Fleet Systems, went on to produce TIEs for their new navy. Before the video ends, let me share some cool behind the scenes facts about the TIE Fighter. The TIE Fighters we see in A New Hope were relatively white, but were actually meant to originally have maroon hulls, as it would have prevented the TIE Fighters not being seen while using a blue screen. However, maroon TIEs were seen to blend too easily into the mostly black star fields, so a light grey was used instead. The TIEs we see in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi were a blue grey. And that's it, all we know about the TIE Fighters from Star Wars. Please let us know what your favourite TIE Fighter moment is in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please consider liking and subscribing for more content like this in the future. Please also check out the videos on screen now if you have the time. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you.